silent, still. Where soft light and shadows fall in vague mosaic about a host of tall, slender columns. A forest of exotic pine trees, planted to provide pine logs in abundance for the industries of man. What then, deep within the shadows of an ordered pine wood, could cause such terrible devastation? The remnants of a once prosperous forest, now standing like the ruins of some ancient and barbaric colonnade, destroyed not by man, disease or fire, but a forest laid waste by Cyrex noctilio. Steel blue in colour, sinister in appearance. The one and a half inch long female wood wasp has a sheathed ovipositor or drill-like egg-laying organ. With this, she drills through the bark and into the sapwood of the trees where the eggs are deposited. So compelling is the urge to overposit that each female wasp may bore into the tree every few inches at five minute intervals, during which as many as 400 eggs may be laid before she finally dies. After having penetrated the wood, the eggs are released through the ovipositor. At the time of ovipositing, spores of a wood rotting fungus are released together with the eggs. The fungus, which is carried in sacs in the body of the wasp, multiplies quickly. It's thought that it conditions the wood for the young grubs by drying it out. As the fungus spreads within the trunk and branches, the tree will begin to die, showing a characteristic red colour in its foliage from the top downwards. In the meantime, the grubs begin to tunnel throughout the tree. After a period, the fully grown grubs change into pupae and then to adult wasps which, when mature, will bore their way out of the tree during the summer months. Over 4,000 wood wasps may emerge from one single tree, eating their way out through perfectly cut round holes. The males may be distinguished by their orange colour abdomen. Cyrex noctilio a European migrant to this country from New Zealand, was discovered in a Tasmanian forest of Pinus radiata in March 1952. In time, enormous numbers of trees were to die. The face of the countryside was to change from luxuriant green to deathly monotones of grey. December 1961, larvae and adult Cyrex wasps were found in timber at a mill in a Melbourne suburb. The pine logs were traced as having come from a small private plantation at Woodyalla. Cyrex noctilio had been found on the mainland. The press and radio reacted generously in informing the public, and soon hundreds of reports and insect samples began to pour into the offices of the Victorian Forest Commission, all of which had to be immediately investigated. January the 5th, 1962, the presence of Cyrex confirmed east of Melbourne near the Dandenong Ranges. January the 19th, Cyrex found on the Mornington Peninsula. The resources of the Forest Commission were now marshaled into a gigantic effort to destroy and to determine the extent of the attack. As the search intensified, even more infested areas were revealed. Cyrex in Gippsland at Hayfield and Longford. Cyrex at Park Orchards, Yan Yin and Lilydale. Cyrex at Dandenong, Cranbourne and Nanagoon. The fires of eradication burned each day and their smoke signaled the presence of Cyrex in many parts of southern Victoria.
Within Victoria stands 130,000 acres of Pinus radiata. Across the border and into South Australia, over 162,000 acres. Beyond the mountains and on the southern highlands of New South Wales, 125,000 acres of pine forest provide a major industry. In all states of the Commonwealth, Australians are aiming to plant about 75,000 acres of softwood a year. Pine trees are shelter belts to give protection from the wind to stock and orchards. Plantations of radiata for the making of particle board, a popular building material which depends entirely upon the regular supply of pine logs in its manufacture. Vast forests of pine for sawn timber, flooring boards, furniture and the making of plywood. Pine, a half a million acres planted to provide raw materials for the manufacture of an endless number of goods today and in generations to come. A vast industry, even now worth $200 million a year yet to be challenged by so small an insect. The Commonwealth and state governments, working with complete unanimity, were quick to take up the challenge. Immediately the outbreak of Cyrex upon the mainland was confirmed, federal quarantine laws were enforced to prohibit the removal of timber from infected areas. The dockside search by the Commonwealth quarantine authorities for Cyrex in imported packing cases and timber became even more critical. And the fumigation or destruction of all suspect timber was and still is being carried out. At the Premier's conference in 1962, Federal and state leaders agreed to share the cost of a national Cyrex fund to aid research and to assist Victoria with its program of survey and eradication. Aircraft were used to locate and direct foresters to trees that appeared infected. In this way, constant surveillance was effectively kept over large forest areas by the Forest Commission and owners of private plantations who had contributed to the National Cyrix campaign. Under the direction of the National Cyrix Committee, Australian scientists and research workers began to conduct the world's first major organised and coordinated research programme into the problems of Cyrix. At the Waite Agricultural Research Institute at Adelaide, Research workers are engaged in studies to learn basic information on the Cyrex fungus. Using special techniques to produce artificially the fungus fruiting body, scientists have been able to identify under the microscope the group to which the Cyrex fungus belongs. extracts of this fungus were added to a nutrient solution in which small pine seedlings were growing, it was found that they began to die within a short time. Thus, the first experimental evidence of the ability of the fungus to kill pine trees was obtained. Healthy pine trees may successfully combat an attack by Cyrex. Non-vigorous trees, especially those which have suffered drought conditions, are often more susceptible. At the research station of the Commonwealth Forestry and Timber Bureau near Hobart, field experiments are underway. Cyrex wasps held captive within wire mesh cages are allowed to infect healthy trees, and the result in relation to tree physiology are then studied. Some pine trees, after an attack by Cyrex, react by secreting under high pressure a great deal more resin than others. It's been found that trees which have a tendency to this characteristic are often more resistant to the effects of the Cyrex fungus.
From selected trees, foresters see the possibility of breeding a new Cyrex resistant strain of Pinus radiatum. Pinus radiata, a tree of North American origin, grows well in Australia when removed from the tree diseases of its natural habitat. Cyrex noctilio, an infiltrator of European origin, multiplies quickly when out of reach of its natural enemies. What else then can be done to control this vandal of the pine forests? For the answer, man again has turned to nature. From small numbers of parasites collected by Australian scientists at a special laboratory established in England by the CSIRO, large populations of insects are being bred at the organization's Cyrex research unit near Hobart. To facilitate handling, the new generations of parasites are anaesthetized before being packaged for distribution to infected areas, where they'll be released in large numbers. In this way, scientists hope to establish in this country effective biological control of the Cyrex wood wasp. Parasites now active in some Victorian and Tasmanian forests is the tiny Ibelia, which seeks out with her antennae the eggs of the Cyrex. Through the hole previously made by the female wood wasp, Ibelia deposits her own eggs upon that of the Cyrex. Rissa, colorful ingenious. In searching for Cyrex larvae, she drills a hole through which her own eggs are placed upon the Cyrex grubs. In time, they in turn hatch out and with voracious appetites devour their host. Megarissa, the most spectacular Cyrex parasite so far introduced into this country by the CSIRO. Endowed by nature with an enormous ovipositor, Megarissa can reach far into a tree and there deposit her own eggs upon the Cyrex larvae. A generation ago, men began to plant pine trees to supplement Australia's dwindling forest timber. Today, we begin to reap an inheritance from their foresight. Only by the prompt action of the Commonwealth and State authorities has the spread of Cyrex in Victoria been so far held in check. But unless the cooperation by industry and the public is assured, our vast national assets of Pinus radiata will continue to stand in jeopardy. Watch for the signs of the wood wasp and do not remove timber from out of proclaimed areas. Your participation could go a long way in helping to preserve our pine forests and in bringing about the final defeat of Cyrex noctilio.